Hey. Food. Yeah, hey. So this is a uh, fun fact that people don't really know, but uh, the term hey, like hey, how you doing, came from a farmer giving hay to a cow. Jesus Christ, oh my God. <laughs> We are trying to, we're trying to get to Fredericksburg. We're gonna check out the Lyndon B. Johnson State Park, and maybe we'll check out some balloons while we're there. Um, Rachel's into every big old bump and pop right now, so I apologize for making it. And the fear for my life. So we've made it here to Linda B. Johnson Historical Park down here near Fredericksburg, Texas. It is a nice kind of cloudy day. Not too many people out. This is kind of Austin's uh, playground, if you will, up here in the Fredericksburg area. So it can get crowded at times, but it looks like today it's a pretty nice day. And we're going to take you on a little tour with us so you can see this nice little hidden gem that Central Texas has. Hispanic and German settlers. So we just got done with the quick video that they had in there for the Lyndon B. Johnson Historic Park. And we are on the little trail outside the back right now. We are going down to the Living Farm Museum. We're supposed to be seeing how the working farms from the 1912s, 1920s were. Come with us to check out to see how they live. So hey, life as a YouTuber, you pack around a lot of things and you forget stuff. Fortunately, we did. <laughs> Fortunately, we got our battery this morning. We almost left it, and then we started to try to take photos. Couldn't figure out why the camera was working. We forgot to put the battery in the camera. She says we, but it's actually me. <laughs> Trails they have between the different facilities, and they're really nice, maintained, and really nice and wide, perfect for your kids running around, or if you have any disabilities, it's not too bad to be able to get out here. Uh, there is water in a creek that's just off to our side over here right now. We've actually had some rain in the big country area so it's been really great and over here on my right you can see her little booty wandering off now they have some cows out here which for Texas isn't a really big deal but this is supposed to be a working ranch from the 1920s so we're gonna go up here and get nice and close and personal to see how they did it in the 1920s in the frontier <laughs> He's gonna be mad. Yeah, or the other. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear him? So we went over there and saw the turkeys, and he gave us a nice little show and a little bit of a scare with his little thumping noises. But fortunately, nobody got attacked, or maybe unfortunately for views. But hey, we're over here next to the gardens that they have out here that they actually use when they're preparing the foods inside that you can go in there. They show you how they made it from the 1920s without electricity, without any running water. And I think sometimes you get a little taste to see how it was back in the day. Thank you. 
Now you're gonna hear a lot of cows in the background and he just let her inside because she has to be milked by hand. And they do use this milk to make cheeses and butters and then just the regular milk to drink. They use it in the recipes that are inside and they have chickens for eggs and they keep longhorns here on the property as well. Look in the kitchen here on the left. Can't go in, unfortunately, because we've got this wood stove fired up. That's where we cook dinner every day. Um, also in the kitchen, you'll see a big blue pan on the table. That's the fresh milk from the cow this morning. So we still milk the cow every day. Still raw milk has not been pasteurized. It can sit out on that table all day without us. Then the house here next door, it's open to walk through and explore. Everything is set 1918 into World War One time period because that's when they had all these the structures completed as it is seen today. But that's also because of a nice crop of cotton that the Beckmans had in 1915 because of World War I happening in Europe. That inflated the price of cotton from about four cents to 19 cents a pound. And that's what paid for this very nice Victorian style house right here, which he promised his wife when they got married in 1907. Eight years for his wedding present to come to life, but <laughs> hey, better late than never. Better late than never. <laughs> So we're over here on this side, which would have been his home back in the 1920s. And let me tell you something, it is hot in here. I am not sure how they even dealt with this kind of heat. They do have the windows closed right now, but it is warm in here. Not exactly the most efficient way to be washing your face in the morning, but this is how they did it back in the 1920s. You had your bowl, your water, and it looks like a little sponge over there. Is there any vampires in here? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. No, says I. <laughs> no vampires. Oh wait, and now it's garlic cloves, not onions. My bad. Garlic cloves, yes, and I need to point the garlic cloves. <laughs> Oh wait, there's garlic there. Oh, yeah, there's garlic yeah. back there. <laughs> okay, so we're out in the back part of where the house was. This would have been the cellar. Uh, they didn't have refrigerators and pantries all up inside because it was just too hot up in there. So you get to be out here with your nice stinky garlic and onions. It's still too hot. <laughs> it is still too hot. Okay. He added this story. I feel like uh, churning some butter. <laughs> Chickens are fighting. Oh no, Something. we're missing the fight. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> Okay, so we think that this might be Parmesan cheese or something similar to it sitting out over here. Uh, it looks like this might have been like the storage room. Or not the storage room, where they actually probably made the cheeses. And there is a grinder, so maybe it was where they milled their grains as well. And just here's another extra little spot that they would have used for working. Interestingly enough, the kitchen is separate from where the main living places are inside because it would just get too hot during the summer down here in Texas. But every room also had a wood burning fireplace for in the winter so they could keep nice and toasty. Hey ladies, y'all hanging out together. Look at those horns. Me too. I bet you he's the butt of some jokes, though. Oh, oh hello. I guess she just got milked over there. Or she hasn't yet, and it's an utter shame. <laughs> it's a great place for photography here at this particular historic site. If only someone knew how to take a photo. <laughs> hey, we're learning. We're getting better. I think you can agree on each episode, every video. More and more technical skills are developing and our interview skills and our storytelling will get better with time. So keep watching. Do you have a glass? No?
him, because I just found me a tall drink of water. By the way, this is a free state and national park. Yeah. The thing we've seen so far, we've seen humongous butterflies, yeah. frogs, a turkey that tried to attack us, yeah, chickens, ducks, some longhorns. There's some buffalo around here somewhere. I haven't found them yet. Uh, a couple deer, big old hawk. It's a good, cool place. Use the back door. <laughs> So here we are at the location of the Lyndon B. Johnson, his original school. His mother brought him over here when he was four years old for a better education. Interesting thing, she was a college-educated woman, so in the 1920s, that would have been extremely rare for that time. Uh, most women were, you know, if they got to high school, they were really lucky. So as a college-educated woman, she knew the importance of an education for her kids. So she pulled him out of his school when he was seven and brought him to a little city and had him go to school there. But let's see if we can see something on this back side. Son. Well, would you look at that? Doesn't doesn't work very well. No. At that age, he was an A1C. Lady Bird Johnson earned her bachelor's degree from UT in art and journalism. She was very attuned to nature and conservation, and you can still see her influence today in the beautification highway programs, especially in Texas. One of the cool things about the uh, LBJ family is that Lady Bird Johnson, almost sometimes what she did overshadowed President Johnson. So we're over here at the Texas White House. This place was used about a quarter of the time through his presidency. That's why it was nicknamed the Texas White House. He kept coming back over and over again for a nice retreat away from the Washington socialites. And he would have his meetings out here with his advisors on what was going on for the country, for the Vietnam War, for the civil rights. And we'd love to take you up a little closer, but as you can see right now, it looks like it's kind of cordoned off. So leave a comment below for any fun historical place that you think we should visit next, and we will see you in the next video.